I had found this film in a camera my girlfriend had bought three years ago in an antique shop in Bangor, a town not far from Belfast in Northern Ireland. It was an old Super 8 camera. The film had remained unfinished inside the camera. Someone had obviously forgotten that it was there. I felt unable to throw it away, and one day I had it developed. The film was two minutes long and consisted of three separate scenes. A family at the seaside, a woman carrying a silver tray towards the camera, and a series of confused images, probably shot inside an antique shop. I had got used to watching the little film very often. One day, I understood that I wanted to find his family. Même commentaire hein, pour cette partie-là. Pas de saturation de couleur. I went to the Kodak laboratory to see if it was possible to know when the film had been made. C'est un film Kodak signé KMA. Non, non, pas, pas du tout, parce que je suis sur fond, c'est une usine de fabrication. On a Ils ont pas du tout le code de, de photographie, que de la fabrication des missions, qui, par les symboles, lui donne l'année de fabrication. Ça, Donc, on a de une croix, un triangle et une oui. croix. Je pense qu'il y en a une croix, triangle, euh, croix. Si je me renforce dans mon tableau. Ça correspond à une année de fabrication de 1983. Oui, d'accord. Là, je vais avoir du mal après de vous donner une autre adresse. On essaiera de le trouver. C'est pas avant 83, ça on en est sûr. Ça, pas de problème. Pas de problème. I went to Belfast to try to find the people who were in this little film, which I had come across purely by chance. I wondered if these people could still be found. If so, I could perhaps give the film back to them. I dropped off my bags and went out for my breakfast. It was a Sunday morning and the pace of the city had slowed down. Something very important had changed in Belfast. Just two days beforehand, the loyalists had agreed to the ceasefire which the IRA had declared at the end of August. This Sunday was the first Sunday of peace, however uncertain in Belfast for 25 years. 
The papers I bought on arriving showed the photos of the first baby to be born in peacetime. The following morning, I set off in search of these people, about whom I knew nothing, except that they were in this little field, which had been shot at the seaside 10 or 11 years earlier. It was autumn, mid-October, and it was a pleasure to look at the countryside. the street where my girlfriend had bought the camera, Grace Hill. I soon discovered, however, that there were over a dozen antique shops in the same street. How much is on that? I think it's six. But... Six. So I'll give you for five if you want to. I take it, okay. No problem, eh? Each time I watched the little film, I discovered new details. And each person I showed it to saw something else. I was able to find the right shop because of a sign opposite, which appeared through the window in the confused images on the little film. I also recognized the floor tiles and the door handle. It was the right shop, but the setup had changed, and it had become a showroom where auctions were held. The various antique sellers who had worked there before were all gone now. No one knew where I could find them. Then I met Dorothy, who ran the antique shop next door to the showroom. They're not very clear. No. I showed her some photos made from the film. Oh, that's a better one. And no, I don't, I don't recognize this lady. I only know of two people who would have sold cameras. I know where one person is, but I cannot trace the other. I have no idea. But probably, with a little bit of work, it could be traced down. Because I think this man, he now works in a company. You know, part-time job, he got tired doing the shop business. So probably we could find out the company's name and you could maybe trace him from there. That's, it. That's about all I could know. Do you think we could find this company? Yes, I know the company. But I myself couldn't get in touch with him. You would have to do that. Yes. Or perhaps we could do it. We could make a bit of an effort. Maybe be able to do it. Okay. Dorothy remembered the people who had worked there before. And she thought I should be looking for someone called George McWilliams. She also recalled having heard where he was working now. 
but he had left his job without leaving any address. She remembered that a friend of her knew George's mother. The next day, I had the address of George's mother, and I went to visit her in Belfast. The city streets hardly seemed the same as that first Sunday. I went to the address indicated at Alexandra Park Avenue. A young woman who opened the door led me to another house in the same street, and there I met George's mother. She telephoned George and I was able to speak to him. I told him the whole story. He didn't seem to find it strange or complicated, but said he couldn't help me since he had never kept any records of his cells. He couldn't recall any details either. He agreed to meet me the next day anyway. That afternoon, I came across John Major, who had probably come to Belfast to show his support for the ceasefire. I was eager to meet George, and I thought of this phrase from a novel by Bruce Chatwin. When reconstructing any story, the wilder the chase, the more likely it is to yield results. I went out on the town. I secretly hoped I might bump into the little girl in the film, who would probably be about 18 years old by now. That's the camera, all right? That's it? I met George McWilliams the next morning. There's a handle like he folds up down. So it's in the bag. That's the very same one, that's where it is. He was now working at night as a security guard and he had just returned from work. It's really somewhere else, isn't it? He had in fact a very good memory. And he remembered the camera as soon as he saw the instruction leaflet. I don't actually recognise the people on it, to be honest with you. But I know definitely that's who had the camera that I was selling it for on commission. It was Jim and Jerry Lennon. So, so you, you recognise them? Or? No, that's what I'm saying, I don't. So that lady there, I've never seen before. He remembered the people who had sold him the camera, Jim and Jerry Lennon. But this only gave rise to confusion, since they were not the ones on the Super 8 film. I was looking for the phone number there to see if I had the phone number. Okay. Will you? Have the address. He was, however, very sure of himself and could even get me their address. There's a J.A. Lennon here, 26 Victoria Road. 6 Victoria Road. Roger, I'll try that. Is it a Mr. J. Lennon? Lives in 26 Victoria Road. That must be this, but it's supposed to be an office, maybe. The only P. Lennon in the book is Lance Road. Then I went back to Bangor. Ahead, I took a taxi to Jim Lennon's house. You're clear there, Trinity. Hi. 
There was nobody there, but I decided to wait. And after a while, the neighbors came to see who I was looking for. They told me that Jim was normally at home at this time, but that today, I wasn't in luck. I would have to come back the next day. I went into a nearby pub. The waiter was called Stephen. He was born in Canada. His parents, I decided to emigrate there from Belfast in 1969, at the beginning of the Troubles. They had come back in 1971 because his mother was homesick. No, I'm afraid not. No. Have you any names at all? How are you going to trace them then? It looks like Bally Home Beach. Really? Yeah. Which is about two miles around the corner from here. But like any beach looks like... Uh, you know, beaches look kind of similar, don't they? If they're from Bangor, I, I would say that that's where it's from, that's where it's taken from. But, uh, no, I can't help you. The beach in the film could have been anywhere, but I knew already that it couldn't be Bali Hall, the beach in Bangor that Stephen talked about, because from here, the shore of Belfast Law land on the other side was always visible, but in the little film, the sea stretched out indefinitely. Sometimes, I wonder what I was doing here on the trail of these people, who I almost certainly would not succeed in finding. What people seemed to find strange was not that I was looking for this family, but that I came for some other reason than making a film about the troubles and the ceasefire. I had been there for one week. I was waiting for something to happen. The next day, I returned to Bangor. I rang the doorbell of 26 Victoria Road and a man came to open the door. It was Jim Lennon, senior, the father of the man who had sold the camera to George. But he didn't recall that his son ever had a movie camera. He invited me in for a cup of tea. I showed them the photos and his wife thought she recognized Molly, a former neighbor of their daughter-in-law, Jerry. Who's your could be Molly, grandchildren and her daughter. That's Billy Home, isn't it? Sure, it's Billy Home. Do I like Billy Home, Bay? No, you would get the dividers. We might see when it goes further. You shouldn't do that. Let's have another look at Molly. I swear that's Molly. That's the man, that's her husband. She's about 18 now, Gary says. Well, that's 10, 11 years ago. Turn around. Turn around, Molly. <laughs> Turn around. And that could be the daughter. You couldn't, you couldn't really tell, you know. Could be, you know, no, but you couldn't could really be. tell. That smell there that's is smell, very, very, very like, like Molly, yes, sir, huh? Well, that's our job. Definitely, it. Yeah. It just needs to be Molly now. Very, very, very like Molly's smell. Well, there's more. Yeah, but that's my own That's family. your own oh, that's, yes. that's, <laughs> that's my father. Is that your father? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the I see, see yes. Yeah. Cool <laughs> Up there, right over on the far side. Let's get round and see Molly. Do you think it's her? I th it's very um, like her. It's very like her. You see, if we, we didn't take ten know years it. off her. Uh, I would think it's very like her. What's your name? Francois. 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 Yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, Francois, we didn't know her twelve years ago, 
But we're assuming we only met her in the last two years at see, pensioners' and clubs, you know. And, and we're assuming what should look like that. And he thinks they're your photographs, and he would like you to look at them. They were inside a cine camera, and he developed them, and he would like to meet you. Well, be all right for around about ten minutes. Did she have grandchildren? Yes, we think. Yes, oh yes, she's a daughter and two sons. There are two daughters and one son, is it? So it'll be all right to see us. All right, dear. In about ten minutes, he'll see you. You'll be glad to see somebody. Wait, right, Molly. Bye, dear. Bye, bye. Oh, she says she's got photographs of me. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know it's her yet. <laughs> Jim drove me to Molly's, who lived next to Ballyhorn Beach, and I knew already that this wasn't the beach in the film, since the other side of the law was clearly visible from here. Also, there were no rocks on this beach, just sand. While he was driving, Jim spoke a little French with a strong Canadian accent, and he explained to me that they had lived in Montreal at the beginning of the 60s because Jim couldn't find any work in Belfast. The grand years of Belfast, so Jim told me, had been those of the cheap building yards at the beginning of the century. It was here that they built the Titanic. Before going to see Molly, I wasn't sure whether or not to bring the camera. I didn't want to frighten her. Jim thought, it would be better not to bring it, but I took it with me anyway. Molly, do you have a video? Me? A TV and video? Well, Laurent yeah. has a... Yes, He's Lord. got a video of the film that was in the thing. Have here you really? Shows you running about the beach. I haven't got <laughs> one here. You haven't got because one? Because I gave it to my son, and I said, there's no point in me keeping the video. You see, when I had that severe stroke... Well, maybe you could come with us back to our house, and we'll show you it. How about that, Francois? Do nice. this? <laughs> of course. Can I get my key? So it... Oh, those lovely little rain. <laughs> well, I'll let you take the phone and show them to Charmaine and see if she knows herself there. <laughs> yeah. She's a regent. I should be maybe home to school you're not there. Can you recognise yourself, Lorraine? That's yourself then, Lorraine. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that's the there. Well, that's <laughs> both now, all right. Hey. Because they used to come there for their holidays. I see, and yeah. They always came there to Bolivia. Well, if you come just... with us now around yes. the Victoria I'm Road, get my key we'll and play it for you. We've watched get... the film twice. Really... It's or... about a two minute film, you know. Oh, well, just what was left in the camera. I know, I have your key. It's an Alan I started filming because I was happy that someone had recognized themselves in the photo. But I could hardly believe I had found them. Molly's daughter was there too. She was looking at the photo silently. to see it again. Who took this? Your Alec. Alec. Alec took it. Mm -hmm. And Jackie is Lorraine's husband. Yes. And she didn't recognise him. They were here for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> they were here for a holiday. Who's that in the water? In his swimming trunks. <laughs> Thought it was the Loch Ness she, Monster. Uh, you, she was dark haired then at that time, my mother. Yes. I had lovely red hair then. Mm -hmm. Could, could I show the, the film to sure. your husband and your daughter? Yeah, yeah sure. like that was see. amazing to see Jackie. I remember him now with that thing around him, trying to learn <laughs> to swim. <laughs> Does he still not swim, right? No. Mm -hmm. Isn't, isn't that, that was very, very nice <laughs> of you. That was extremely nice of you. 
Wasn't that lovely? <laughs> that lovely. Oh, we had a lovely time there, love. Yes, dear. Yes. You were right. And we've got Molly here showing her the film. And it's oh, her. Right. Yes, it is indeed. And <laughs> Francois taking a movie off them too. Please the phone over to Molly and then. No. Yes. Yes. You want to, you want to work with her? Jerry? Oh, is it Jerry? Yes, it's Jerry. Molly, here's Jerry. That's Daddy. That's <laughs> you. And that's mm, Oh, I remember that with a tire. And yes, I knew you would remember that, Jackie. And that's you were splashing me there, chasing me. And that was that was Bogner also with I one remember of my that. What I did there was very risky. For starters, I, c I can't swim. So I put that's a tire on. on I went away out it. into the sea with a tire. If the tire would, if I'd have hit a rock, the tire would have busted. You don't die. I'd have been drowned. <laughs> Oh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> oh, Alec was telling you to do that, Charmaine. Splash, <laughs> Nanny. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Up there. So you're swimming there, Jackie. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <That was> tired. <laughs> that was my bowling trophy of Bogner, but I didn't get keeping that Jackie. They only took them every year off you. Yeah. You were five? Mm -hmm. I was about five, that's mm -hmm. right. And how old are you now? I was sixteen. Sixteen. <laughs> Did you recognise you very well in the picture? Yeah, yeah. I know me, I know me. And you <laughs> Wait, do you know what you do? I <laughs> She liked France, didn't you? <laughs> for yeah. holiday? Yeah. Yes. Are you over here on holiday? No, I came especially for that. Yeah. Yes, I came especially to give you this day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jackie, put that on top it's of that amazing. thing over there. Look, there. There, that one. Belongs to that there. Don't let the chap go with that. Oh, no, 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 I shan't. There's Roger. Going to get a picture taken with Sean, are you? So that's it, I wanted to give you this tape back and it was the, the idea of my journey here and the idea of the film I'm making now, it's, the film is about a, a traveller that goes to Belfast to give some people a, a film back oh, right. <laughs> yeah. so, and you are these people. That's funny, like the, the, it went to Paris, the, films, the film was taken in the south of England. Yes. Oh, and now we're here in Bangor. In Bangor. <laughs> yeah. Look at the story he has. He has that to take back to France. Let me see all this dawn. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing, Jackie. Her one camera. Yeah. Got around so much. We decided to meet up again on Saturday. That evening, I telephoned my girlfriend Suzanne, who was still in Paris. She came over to Belfast a few days later. Back to see the Nicoles.
Never told me. See, no. Maybe Francois never drunk whiskey before. Maybe make him sick. No, don't don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> the only little bit of French I know is Vermila Porcivo play. <laughs> what does that, that mean? What does that mean? Vermila Porcivo. If we'll play. See if we play. What does that mean, Francois? Close the door. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> I would just tell the story as I find it. That's right. Like John Wayne riding into a town to clean up a lot of bandits. Yeah. And it, <laughs> you were born in Ohokal? Yeah, but that has nothing to do with this here. Lorraine was born Where I was born. Belfast? No. I was born in Belfast. The whole story... The, the whole story is to do with finding the film. Finding that film. Finding those people yes. who were on the clip of film. Meeting them once again, 10, 11 years on. That's right. And eventually it's filming amazing. them down at the beach where the film first started. Yes. And seeing the difference. Seeing how the little girl of five who kicked it, <laughs> who kicked the water into her grandmother's face, oh, yeah. is now 16. We had great fun that day. Well, especially when the film is in Northern Ireland. Of course, everyone over the world will want to know. I wonder, will he say anything about the troubles? You know, because Northern Ireland is famous all over the world for one thing, and that is the troubles. Now, you asked me yesterday what I thought as a Northern Ireland man about the troubles, and I thought, I told you that the troubles were ludicrous. That's the right. biggest load of nonsense out. Right from the start. <coughs> that the people of Northern Ireland, who the conflict is all about, Catholic and Protestant. Yes. Those people could live together tomorrow, happily, if they were allowed to. We want peace and quiet. We want our children to grow up where they can go anywhere, like I said to you yesterday, where they can go anywhere in Northern Ireland. They don't have to pick a certain area. Oh, I can't go there. Oh, I can't go there because it's Protestant. Oh, I can't go there because it's Catholic. We want them to be able to go anywhere they want. But then that's how we did live. Yes, that's how we did live before the Troubles. Oh, yes. Yes, I know that. Yes, I know that. How we did live. I understand that. Years. I am old enough I to remember... I was a baby in a pram. I used to push my uh, pram up the falls road, through there, down the Shankle Road, across Agnes Street, and up. Boom. Yes, that's the way it should be. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be, yes. What on earth happened, I don't know, to me. Oh, well, what happened? <laughs> don't know what happened, what don't happened know. is now all in the past, hopefully. Oh, so. Hopefully. <laughs> When the film had been made, Jack had been a darts champion. He had represented Ireland in the World Championships in Las Vegas in 1979. There was still someone missing. I had known, since my first meeting with the Nichols, that the film had been made by Alec, Molly's husband, and that Alec had died several years ago. I hadn't thought of this possibility before, but this was the simplest explanation for the reel of film being left unfinished in the camera. It was the last film he had made before disappearing. I 
had come with the last images this man had taken of his family. And yet, somehow, there was no sense of sadness. Perhaps it would have been different if Alec had appeared in the film. He could have simply handed the camera to Jack, and Jack could have continued filming. But Jack was too busy learning to swim. Alec wasn't in the film, and it was as if his absence from the film seemed somehow to make his absence from life today more acceptable. I thought of all the films I've shot of my own family. Perhaps establishing these images is a way of resisting the passage of time, a way of refusing to accept the disappearance of those we love. This was the first time they saw these images. Alec had often filmed his family, but he had never shown them any of his films.